Hello and welcome. You're watching News Click and joining us today on this. Uh, well, it's a season to be jolly, maybe in some parts of the world, but it's a season for politics as far as Indian sport is concerned. And so that's exactly what we're talking about. And joining us to do that are three uh, veteran sports journalists who have been covering, I think, everything that has to do with the national sports code, with politics in within the federations, and how the national sports federations, which are the bodies that run various sports. Uh, are managed, are uh, continue to operate, and how they elect uh, the bodies that decide policy as well as uh, programs that are implemented by these federations. We will be sp uh, focusing specifically on, of course, the Board of Control for Cricket in India, the BCCI, which uh, will be holding its AGM in just a couple of days on Christmas Eve, as well as the All India Football Federation, which held its AGM. Uh, yesterday on December 21st, that's a day before we're recording this episode. Um, and so joining us to discuss all these things, plus bringing in the perspective on Olympic sports and the IOA, we have uh, Leslie Xavier, who's Newspeak Sports Editor, of course. Leslie, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks. Uh, Shahada Ugra, who wrote uh, a fairly hard-hitting and to-the-point piece on the Hindustan Times yesterday, detailing... Um, What's happening in the BCCI, the power struggles there or, or, or the fight to sort of uh, continue in power there and, and what the implications are thereof, including various commercial aspects that, that come into the story. And uh, Jedi Basu, who has all the, the juice from, from the All India Football Federation AGM, uh, what happened during the meeting, uh, outside the meeting, and what is likely to happen in the next few days. Uh, thanks, thank you everyone for taking out the time We're, and for joining remotely. Sharda is in Bangalore, Leslie and uh, Jaydeep are joining us from Delhi. Uh, I'll come to you, uh, Jaydeep, first because, of course, that's the AGM that has already happened. And so, so we're reporting on actually the facts that uh, went on there. So... Firstly, uh, give us an outline of the piece that you have put up on uh, Newsflix that talks about the goings on in this very, very long meeting that transpired yesterday between uh, the management of the Federation as well as its permanent members, which are the state associations. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> see, Siddhant, yesterday's meeting uh, was, uh, was long awaited. And uh, there was uh, there was some uh, some uh, anxious uh, people thought there could be some anxious moment, but if you ask me, it uh, turned out to be a damn squib. Because before the before the meeting was held on November 21, when when uh, All India Football Federation wrote to the members that they are holding a meeting on December 21, and they have gone to the AFF had gone to the court uh, seeking directives from the Supreme Court since the election cannot be held. As their, as their new constitution is still struck in Supreme Court and it has not been a, approved by the Supreme Court. At that point of time, you know, which we also wrote and discussed before, that at least 22, 23 federal state association wrote to the uh, uh, AFF saying, uh, some way or the other, everybody's language was different, but they, uh, uh, the, the, the point they wanted to make that the, they wanted the election to be held in time. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be delayed by any chance because AFF had gone to the court seeking uh, extension for the, for the current committee, which is headed by Mr. Praful Patel, who has already completed his three terms yesterday and 12 years. And as per the 2011 sports code and AFF constitution, he is not eligible to continue anymore. Mm -hmm. But what happened in yesterday's meeting the members who wrote the letters didn't say much. Mr. Patel, the meeting went for more than three, three hours. Some of the members were saying that they were so hungry, they thought they will, they will go out of the meeting because it started at five and it went beyond eight o'clock. So five, 5.30 it started, it went beyond eight, eight o'clock. Mr. Patel spoke there for near more than 100 minutes According to the one of the members, he told me that he recorded it for uh, some uh, one hour, 20 minutes or so, then he stopped it because he thought it is going on and on. Mr. Patel apprised the members. He first thing Mr. Patel said that he had completed his term. He is no more eligible to fight another election. And he, is, he, he admitted 
that his term in the AFF is over. But he said that he wanted the committee to run, this committee to continue, because the Supreme Court is yet to come out with a directive. Then he said, if the members want it, he can relinquish his office and the, con and the, and the committee should continue. He also said that, uh, then, he, then he read out, read out the legal, legal opinion which has been given by, his, by AFS legal team. He also said that, uh, that uh, he's a bit concerned because if the AFF becomes without a leader, then it will, be, it will not be good for the game in the country and for the AFF itself. That's what he, he said. So finally what happened, each member, uh, most of the members were asked for their opinion. So some of the members said that, uh, that in that case, we should continue till the, till the Supreme Court order comes on, the, on this thing. And uh, one of them was, of course, the Goa, Goa president, I believe, was, uh, was very forceful. He also said that you should continue. I must remind you, the Goa president is Mr. Chachil Alemo, who is an NCP MLA from Goa. Uh, <coughs> whatever. And then finally, Mr. Subrata Datta, who is the senior vice president of the uh, AFF. For, for, yeah, so just for those who might not know, uh, Praful Patel is also connected to NCP. the NCP. And mm. therefore, that. Therefore, whatever. Hmm. But this, this, they said, there is no politics in it. It is all football. So, uh, what happened after that? Uh, Mr. Subrata Datta, the senior vice president, he uh, moved a resolution saying that uh, that Mr. Uh, the current committee headed by Mr. Patel should continue till its directive from the Supreme Court comes. And it was, it was also given an impression that it is going to be a kind of caretaker government because it was Mr. Patel said, no major decision, financial or policy decision will be taken during this period. And he told the right. members, the moment any directive come from the comes, he will not even wait for a minute, he will leave his post immediately. That's what he assured very, the members. Very fine and very fair. But uh, at this point, if I can just jump, uh, jump in and ask you, the, the, this question has been uh, a matter of litigation now since 2017. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so therefore the claim that the AIFF president has made during the AGM that was held on December 21st, is that no major financial or policy decisions have been made since that time. And that, that practice will continue uh, till the Supreme Court finally gives its order or decision, whatever the case might be. Uh, is that correct? I, I think it is far from correct. I can, I can cite many decisions from 2017 which has been taken which has been taken and they were, if, if you don't call it a major policy decision, I don't know what does it mean by major policy decisions. Mm. Like I give you a few examples. In 2009, I-League was reduced to the second division and, and another league which was made the number one league of the country. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the biggest policy decision in Indian soccer history for many, many years. Is it not a policy decision? Even yesterday in the AGM, there were, uh, there were talk about and it was approved that that uh, around 40 crores i think most of it is coming from fifa and afc for as grants will be spent for that national uh, what, do, what do you call it national center for excellence center of excellence excellence uh, with and which was approved by that agm is it not a policy decision that the aff is bidding for the bidding for the afc cup in 2027 is it, is it not a policy decision that the AFF, well, AFF has twice changed the dates of the da uh, dates of the under 17 World Cup for women is it not a policy decision? See, the federation cannot be run without taking these decisions. There is no doubt. Not. About yeah, it. no yeah, doubt about cannot, it. Can, huh? So you cannot blame them for it. But to pose that we are we are like a caretaker government is, I think, is absolutely ridiculous. If you ask me, okay. that's an Fair enough. Fair enough. So. Uh, I would also like to, uh, we will come to your specific sports, uh, Leslie, you, you're looking at your, you're going to give us uh, 
some information and and uh, updates on what's happening with boxing shada we'll we'll talk to you in detail about the bcci but in the meantime i'd like to invite you both also to jump in and ask jedi penny questions if if you have any as and when uh, those come up but uh, i have plenty <laughs> for for one uh, for one jedi it's clear i think to anyone who's watching an outsider or a lay person or a football fan that uh, a simple decision matlab aapne teen char list kiye but you didn't need to go beyond the first one which is where you said that th- there was there was a clear decision on the part of the federation to uh, sort of demote the i league to the second division and promote the indian super league which is a much newer tournament which uh, as we all know is in its seventh season uh and give that the afc champions league spot and the number one sort of the 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 top of the uh the top tier yeah. as it were yeah. of, yeah. of yeah. indian yeah. football and the acl Despite, spot and the acl and, yeah yeah I mean, absolutely I mean, I mean. the the afc champions league spot uh hmm. and there thereby uh, essentially granting the rights to a private tournament uh, which is which is sort of owned and operated and managed by private entities uh those being uh, of course the commercial partners also of the all india football federation uh the the sort of lead role the premier league spot as far as india is concerned uh, i don't think there can be any debate about whether this is a major policy decision or not because it clearly is so so why make that argument at all in a in a meeting that's been recorded that's been reported on widely for posterity uh, for for whatever reasons i mean even members of i'm sure members who were present in that meeting who like you said were making recordings and making notes of it for their own purposes so why make such a statement and why make all these claims what what uh, from your conversations with people who are in 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 the system what are the possible motivations for this uh, apart from sort of trying to post like hold on to the gaddi for as long as possible that is one reason what what you said is the is the prime reason and another reason could be that holding on to the gaddi which you said that is could that is the prime reason of course another reason could be that so far in the last 20 years in my in my memory in the last last 20 years except for the 2000 elections in the last 20 years when priyaranjan das munshi and samit thapar fought for the presidentship that was that is 20 years ago in delhi in the last 20 years i have never seen at least in my experience of following indian football closely i have never heard the the state associations raising their voice against the federation on any count 23 22 or 21 uh, state associations writing letters to the federation and seeking election is unprecedented which i think has uh, i won't say that af got af have rattled if i say that they will be upset and they will vehemently oppose it they are not rattled but it has made them think i think so they try to make a few concessions they are holding on to their chairs that's why they wanted to make a few concessions that's why the but, off- so okay concessions such as such as concessions that we are uh, we are only a caretaker government we will not take any de- decision and uh, we will uh, vacate the post the moment court order comes but the thing is that when aff went to the court seeking directives that time mm-hmm. nobody was consult- consulted no member was consulted at that time no state association was informed wasn't was, was not it a, uh, wasn't it a, a policy decision yeah seeking yeah. extension of mandate isn't it mm-hmm. a major policy decision mm-hmm. who was consulted at that time nobody was so, consulted so again uh, uh, from a very outside perspective uh, a few weeks ago you look at these 2021 state association writing to the federation saying when you approach the supreme court asking for an extension of the mandate without any elections being held etc etc you are looking for obviously a change in the dynamic in the situation right so what transpired over those few weeks that has led to now the same state federations attending the agm and not voicing the same concerns why i mean <coughs> i suppose apart from the fact that okay now uh, maybe the approach has been a little bit more of a soft glove approach i don't know if that's the term 
बट बट अब अ जेंटल अप्रोच सेइंग कि हम आपसे बात करके देन वी आर गोइंग अहेड विद दिस प्लान एंड वी आर प्रपोजिंग इट टू यू एंड वी आस्क यू टू गिव योर ओपिनियन ऑन इट सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट लिटिल चेंज इन मतलब बिहेवियरल चेंज व्हाट व्हाट इज डिफरेंट इन दीस फ्यू वीक्स दैट हैज लेड टू आई आई थिंक टर्न अराउंड वन वन रीजन इज a a a people a, a a couple of couple of senior of, officials of the aff who are close to uh, mr patel they kept on um, uh, they have they kept on uh, what do you say uh, talking to state associations their secretaries their presidents everybody asking them why they we were doing it and and telling them that they can um, he can uh, uh, these things can be can be mended this can can be changed and another thing is that some of these state state associations have are good within themselves and also try to influence the other associations saying that since the matter is in is in uh, supreme court then why get into it what is the point of our going let supreme court come out with a with a verdict let supreme court say something we will see what happens and then we will talk about it of course there is a time factor involved involved in this this uh, because uh, there was a committee which was working on the constitution of the aif which hmm. apparently submitted the constitution uh, this year early i, I believe february and yes. the supreme court has not acted on it or made a decision on it or ratified it so uh, we are talking about uh, quite a delay in that matter and so uh, i i guess now there uh, if you're looking at the time frame involved then it's it's going to be a long drawn affair and can i also just say that uh, you know expecting the court to act at speed uh, in a situation which is asked for a change a fundamental change in sports bodies functioning it's a bit uh, in the light of how generally things have happened in the court uh, it's it, it's a bit uh, you're just sort of expecting too much uh you are expecting and at the same time you are seeing uh in cricket that there is almost a defiance of the new constitution that has been given to them that has been ordered by the court so it's almost like governors of sport in india are now looking at the court and saying let's use this in a, in the best way that we can make it work for us are uh, the mm. other ones that want to hang on to their places whether it's in mm. cricket or whether it's in football let's work mm. with the with the slowness of the legal system to start with and and uh, to use that and if they change and we don't like what they change we will pay no attention to it you know who's going to keep going back to court there is this uh, uh, as well so it's almost like aiff is waiting for a, a legal stalemate that they'll just continue in this way as long as they can absolutely what they absolutely that's their, that, that's absolutely. the that's game the, plan It's a game plan, yeah. yeah. Game it's plan. Very obvious, yeah. Obvious. In between all this, there was a case that was filed by a former India player seeking, I mean, again in, in the Supreme Court, Kalyan uh, Chowdhury. Uh, anything on that? Yeah, yeah. Anything on that, Jaydi? Because I believe you spoke to him the other day. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, uh, I, I spoke to him and sent me a uh, sent me. Because that was speech. again uh, trying to expedite the situation a little bit, putting in another appeal to the Supreme Court to. speed and things up so that the elections are conducted so yeah he has he has filed a petition and now uh, he is waiting for the for the date to uh, bring it up i don't think it is bef- coming before january by any chance now the, now because now there will because, be a break because uh, because all these things were supposed to come on 18th of december some people said it might come up in the court hearing 18th of december but somehow it did not happen i don't know why it did not happen i have no idea about it but uh, agm has passed off rather peacefully because nothing has come up in the court so uh, yeah as per also my little bit of information the this matter the sealed cover that has been presented to the supreme court which contains the the uh, new the draft of the new constitution, constitution. um will come up for listing before the supreme court on january 4 okay uh so it's only on january 3 we, when we'll know whether the supreme court has the time to uh, sort of take that up in its proceedings for the following day or whether it will once again be uh, you know pushed 
aside for more uh, pressing sort of matters that the court needs to adjudicate on or uh, give some sort of opinion on. Um, that's one. Secondly, uh, and and we don't we we don't honestly know whether or how long the, this this process will continue. Um, given that in mind, what, what could be a possible sort of end goal? How long this obviously can't continue indefinitely. Shada, you've already said that like the the purpose is to continue this process of litigation continually, right? And use the courts as a uh, maybe a, a way out rather than a solution in terms of figuring out something long term, but just to stall matters and, and keep things stuck for the as long as keep this ma the maintain the status yeah. quo as long as possible. Yeah. Uh, how does all of this figure in terms of uh, the fact that the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has already de-recognized several of these um, national sports federations, which includes the All India Football Federation. Uh, and and who is sort of to be held accountable for the impact that comes thereof? Because it's, uh, as far as uh, what is in the mandate of, of these associations, of these federations, it is, of course, growing the game. And then ensuring that those that are par part of that fraternity playing the game and, and associated with it, also continue to benefit from the system around it. So the rules very clearly, according to the sports code, state that uh, you know a lot of the impact will be felt not just by the gov the governance, but but the athletes involved. Because you 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 are if you're derecognized, you are not eligible for a government job. You're not eligible for uh, college admission on sports quota. You're not if you're a national level medalist, you're not eligible for things like railway concessions. So so it has wide ranging impacts, maybe not on the, the, the administration, but on the athletes that are involved in, in this. And this applies to men, women, everyone who is associated with that federation. So so uh, to that end, how, how do these caretaker governments as such function? And what is happening to people impacted by uh, this derecognition? Because it's an annual process now. No, yeah, and I think putting making it an annual process was supposed to bring in a certain uh, uh, a question of accountability and responsibility from these bodies. But let us remember that in the Indian scenario, what all of us uh, as journalists uh, must literally put plant in our head the fact that um, the the ladder of importance and of hierarchy in Indian sports starts with officials, maybe media, maybe not, and players at the bottom. So you're saying that look at the look at all the look at all the uh, when uh, when uh, in fact it should be the other way around. This is Joy Bhattacharya's uh, a great hierarchy of Indian sport that he has created. I'm just repeating it. I must give credit. Mm. He said it should be athlete. So the, 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 the federation should be thinking of athlete, media, and then official. Them. It works ulta. So the uh, uh, so you have to remember that all these consequences of the derecognition, it's on the athlete. It's not on official. It's not on uh, you know. It's not. It's not happening to them. It's the athletes yeah. that are not able to uh, get a job, get a college uh, admission on quota. So it really is not priority. Priority for uh, India, now I'm, my voice is rising because this is a favorite topic of mine. Priority for Indian sports uh, administrators and governors, majority, I say, I say 90% and I'm being kind, is themselves. Their post, what they do, what are the perks of the job, that's what it is. If there are some people, and even the BCCI, which is supposed to be best run in air quotes, uh, organization, we can see what's happening there, you know, best organized. Um, uh, uh, in that article that I wrote for HP yesterday, uh, the actual number of people impacted by no cricket because of COVID, uh, 6,500 players and 500 uh, uh, officials, you know, there's uh, people that, that uh, umpires, scorers, so and so. And, but there is no mention of that. There is no question of, so which tells you why you need a governance restructuring and all that. But look at the level of brazenness and shamelessness that you are ignoring all the new rules that are supposed to be in place. People mm. who are going to attend the meeting day after tomorrow, 
um, they are not they should not be standing for office you know they mm-hmm. put in their chachas and their mamas and everybody else and their uh, daughters and their uh, cousins and their sons and uh, so that is what is uh, what is going on so there is no uh, there is no sense of uh, remorse uh, it's almost like a reflection of what's happening in the country of whatever actions they take there is no sense of remorse and that you are actually answerable to a larger population than just yourself uh, in these positions of power and uh, so uh, at, in your assessment lesley yeah uh, i was going to ask yeah. you anyway in your assessment is this something that you're seeing across um, several federations perhaps that have been that are i mean 57 i think Uh, as per the last list and then three were recognized after that so so i would imagine a vast majority of uh, recognized at least olympic sports or globally played sports are on that list uh, they have been derecognized so if shada saying 6500 which i would assume to be a very sort of upper uh, range like a, a lower estimate of how many people are impacted by the fact that cricket is not going on in this country Um, seven thousand prob- is the number. Yeah, <laughs> only for cricket. Yeah, the rest of the numbers, yeah, yeah. But perhaps <laughs> already uh, people who are already in the system and and at yes. an elite level at yes. some yes. yeah. Some so level, if you yeah. go down further uh, to the grassroots and numbers could be huge. The numbers will be massive. Uh, same with uh, with football. Uh, if you consider that, for example, the youth leagues have been postponed because of the pandemic. even though elite level uh, competition is continuing tens of thousands of uh, boys and girls across age groups are impacted by that uh, let's see are you seeing this similar a similar trend in sports like boxing and wrestling which are potentially medal winners for india when the olympics finally come around in 2021 probably or whenever that happens uh, as far as the present is concerned there is no a bit conflict going on in the wrestling federation but yeah a few I mean, a decade a decade and a half back there was a huge conflict and uh, in that crossfire many athletes including me <laughs> lost our careers in, in the sport so that is one point that i wanted to add to sardas uh, and your discussion about athletes losing out on certificates on jobs and uh, getting college admissions and all that they get caught in the crossfire so if there is a if there is factional fights happening within the system it's not happening in the aif of at, pres- at present because it's i mean it's a huge caucus that's controlling it and the same with uh, many of the other federations where the the top people who are holding on to the seat are very strong that they have subdued all form of uh, factionalism or voices rising against them but in the, in the boxing federation which was supposed to have its elections this year uh, a new faction has come up which is challenging the existing president who is ajay singh the owner of spice jet and uh, so the election, the agm for boxing was supposed to be held on the 18th of this month and uh, quite on, quite the opposite of what happened in the aif so, uh, a majority all the majority of state associations wrote to the boxing federation of india Uh, elections returning officer that uh, considering the uh, uh, dangerous circumstances of covid-19 and considering the age of the officials who are all about 60 70 uh, it's not safe to conduct a agm and an election this year so please postpone it so and and the returning officer agreed to that and the agm on the 18th as well as as well as the election was postponed but now there is a reason why this game played out it's because uh, ashish shela former uh, maharashtra sports minister and uh, uh, a bjp leader he has thrown his hat into the competition into the into the fight for for the presidentship of the boxing federation and he has some support uh, I, i i'm hearing that jay kohli the current secretary is supporting that faction and so there is an internal uh, fight happening there so there are some associations who are with the uh, with the new a uh, group of people who are trying to take control of the federation while the existing president has some people with him so he has it's very clear and it's also alleged by the other party that he has mobilized these letter writing and then used that 
to to get the elections postponed at the same time on the 24th of this month couple of days from now they are they are, uh, they are holding a emergent meeting where uh, they are trying to extend the mandate by 3 to 6 months till the covid crisis is uh, uh, extend the mandate of this body till the till the crisis is uh, so against that there is a i mean it's it's like a soap opera <laughs> you you can easily lose track of it so against that up boxing association has filed a uh, filed a case uh, in uh, in delhi high court which the hearing happened last friday but the uh, asking for a stay order for them on the emergent meeting but the court didn't agree to that and court has uh, uh, set a new date for the hearing on january 10 very convenient because with the emerging meeting will happen and most probably the mandate would be i mean extended to six more months and everybody is happy <laughs> except for the people who wanted election in the body and again so once this kind of factional struggle happen what happens is that there is always a like likelihood of a break of a federation or cases happening and ad hoc body coming into play and all that so this happens at the high level at the at the national federation level and then what happens is they could lose recognition with the with the world body boxing federation had already lost recognition in the early part of this decade and uh, uh, that that political game trickles down to the district level even because every every person up there in the executive committee or the national uh, general body will have their people backing right from, right from the state association district association so factions happen right through till the grassroots and that is where youngsters and i am talking about generations of people losing out generations of athletes losing out because they just don't know which body which person and if you if you end up competing with one uh, one association or one set of official then you get debarred by the other and god help you if that other person is the one who is who, is, who will be on the winning side so that's 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 my story if you ask me so yeah, ashidam i'll just jump in you know the story of uh, deepa Kar- uh, karbakar and her going to rio is founded on the background of this two warring gymnastics federation yeah you know and if she had not pushed and like her uh, like her coach had not gone to the minister this had not happened this had not happened she would not have gone to rio you know this is a winner of a commonwealth games it just first gymnastics uh, medal at a commonwealth games uh, at a big international event she would not have gone it's okay she did win you a medal in uh, rio but she made the final she was there she was fourth so and this was happening behind it there were these two things you can go for this exactly what leslie is saying uh, that, so, uh, yeah and it's very clear that these officials were fighting each other i mean and you i have seen that Uh, that in 10 years time they will be friends they will be ruling the uh, federation together while they are very vindictive towards the athletes who were who, who yes. didn't know which where, where to compete and they just want to compete that that's yes. the whole point yes. so so this this the in fighting beyond officials losing their chair and federation's direction and all that it just kills generations of athletes and we yes. lose momentum and boxing federation clearly when boxing federation lost its recognition in 2013 14 and then look at how our performance was in 2016 rio again we didn't win a medal and before that uh, in 2012 london as well as uh, uh, in beijing in 2008 uh, we got one medal but many of our boxers were there in the there or there about in the medal rounds as well i mean they could have won i mean they just lost narrowly but in rio oh, it was it, yeah. it was completely bad performance that's because they lost out the, and, i mean and these are elite boxers so imagine the trickling down effect down the down the road that's 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 how it Sh- shaga how does it work in cricket because like uh, that is what grabs the most eyeballs by far in this country and i think uh, even the people watching are probably far more concerned about uh, how cricket features in this conversation versus any of these other sports uh, respective of what we might feel um firstly wahan to constitution hai to naya constitution uh, naya bilkul, constitution bilkul naya constitution hai to uh, jo propose kiya ja raha hai from uh, by, by those who are currently holding the positions what what is their kind of stance and and what in your opinion is is their end game or what are they looking at achieving 
the end game fundamentally is to hold on to office that's the end game uh, when the whole bcci constitution and the whole thing came up and they had the supreme court uh, step in and do all these various recommendations and so on the only thing that the bcci old officials argued about or focused on or concentrated on was age limit and tenure and cooling off they were not bothered about anything else the uh, issues mm. they should have addressed was that listen we think that your conflict of interest rules are a little bit wonky can we work them out better can we have a conversation with you they had 6 months to address these things but all that they were worried about was age limit nahi hona chahiye um uh, cooling off nahi hona chahiye tenure limitation bahut kam hai now that they got this done they are literally they are ignoring uh, the constitution that was formed they are ignoring all the new uh, rules that are in place they have all planted their various um you know family members into the post and that and the older guards which is srinivasan anirudh choudhary all these names i'm taking anurag thakur um they are making sure that they can control the the state associations that are there because they've got family and their own people friends and all. friends and family ho gaya pura so uh, their whole game is to because bcci is so much money and uh, you know there is a uh, uh, there's a very interesting uh, bit in ram guha's book which i just read which said that there was a deloiters did like an audit independent audit and they could not share it because it was so horrific Uh, but they said we'll give you a hearing and 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 ram guha took notes about it and which he said that um some people were giving you accounts uh, handwritten on a piece of paper these are state associations every mm. year from say 2000 and uh, eight or close since ipl has been around state associations have been getting 50 crore rupees between uh, 30 crore rupees a year on average old state associations a year state associations to function so right. the whole thing is to be sitting on this money how you going to use it you know what you are going to uh, where are you going to plant it where does the money go <clears throat> all those things are what uh, governance is supposed to be about the the bcci's office where they had the, the main thing both in the sports code and in the bcci constitution is separation of governance and management the moment you separate governance from management then uh, these guys Uh, their job is to think about the game and to focus on what they can do in terms of a wider broader perspective sort of gangly should be thinking about women players junior players first class contract that is their responsibility but no they are thinking of but you have disconnected them from the money because the money is looked after the ceo the cf the cfo has gone uh, the the there was a, a chief uh, operations officer who has gone so they have stripped the entire uh, management office of its capable people because people don't want to work there so the end game is to just be in charge of that money and control the little things you know control the handouts and the largest that you give um one way or the other if it's a sponsorship deal um what will you get from it you know mm. uh, the, the story of uh, saurav ganguly's many conflicts of interest it just boggles the mind that they are even there and they are not talked about and they are being now said ki are this is a political game he is a soft target bhai elections aane wale bengal mein february mein ye kuch us tarah ki chaal hai so that is the whole thing that is in play it is it is about power and control and being a top it's not that they are robbing money from the bcci's treasury but they are controlling all the favors that you can give and get in return for the things that you do which may be um, without the ceo even having any independent sort of uh, input into what's going on so current office bearers that way again it's it's hardly surprising because it was a compromise formula right because yeah. otherwise otherwise these these two desha as well as saurav gangli wouldn't have been there so all these old players and shrinivasan yes. anurag thakur everybody yes. had a, had a stake in it and this was the compromise that they made and Uh, beyond that i guess i guess maybe the unwritten agreement was that we will ensure that all these tenures and everything would be removed by the time by the time i so i because i follow the story of this whole thing so closely you could literally see the media management that was sort of going on behind the scenes you know so when the first thing when the when the when the reforms came they said are ministers going to bring sports ministers going to bring um, uh, sports code so sports code will override the bcci code nothing of the sort No sports code, code came. That sports code, which is 
quite dramatic. This 2017 one, it's hanging because they do not want something which says that ministers cannot be there and all kinds of other crazy uh, sort of uh, very fanciful and uh, uh, dream scenario sort of conditions are there. They'll not push mm. that. They'll not push that through. They don't want to push it through. So uh, I, and uh, almost as a reflection of what you're seeing across other Indian sports um, happening is that you are literally the cricket has a has a sort of life of its own and its own energy and it's got this vast uh, sort of uh, uh, it, it's a magnet that people are attracted to but you should have a team that should be winning every international match it plays okay not every thoda zyada ho gaya chalo 75% of your matches you should be super dominant you should be winning everything you have resources grounds money everything at your disposal uh, people uh, talent coming in so what you are going to do is uh, maybe it will run for a while in this sort of manner, but who knows, you know, what happens. Why are you not winning more? Same thing. Why, why, is, uh, why, is, why do we not win more medals at the Olympics? It's not because of athletes. It's because the sport is administered so shabbily in this country that uh, you see the consequence. That, that medal tally response is a, a response to the administration and not, not to the athletes. Fair enough. And that makes absolute sense. I, I don't think uh, anyone watching this will have any sort of uh, questions about the motivation uh, because understanding, I mean, it's fairly simple power dynamics which operate in at every level of our lives. Uh, and this seems very similar, except with billions of dollars at stake and, and of course, control over cricket. Jerry, you know, the now that uh, how much of a role has the pandemic played firstly in all of this mm -hmm. first and secondly 2017 was when uh, the new constitution or uh, was asked for or where the uh, ombudsman was appointed and and bhaskar ganguly was former india captain and sy Qureshi, who is former election commissioner of india were appointed to kind of write that constitution and, and then give it back to the Supreme Court who would then ratify it and then everything that happens in the AIFF would uh, would be according to that new constitution. Uh, now, 2017 to 2020 end, uh, there have obviously been several delays in, in that process. Even if we say that, okay, that sealed cover was submitted to the Supreme Court early this year, uh, a lot of time was wasted or was not, not I wouldn't say wasted because I, I'm not accounting for the time, but uh, a lot of time went by without any action having been taken. So, so the timing of all of this, uh, also given the added sort of uh, angle of the pandemic, seems completely off. See, this is nothing to do with the pandemic. First of all, the, the, the committee which was headed by Mr. Qureshi and Dr. Qureshi and Rashkadda, they were told to uh, submit the report within eight weeks. Mm. Uh, what stopped them to uh, submit in, uh, what, what made them to submit in three years, I have no idea. Which, uh, maybe there was some problem. I don't want to criticize them. But I thought it has gone too long. They could have given it earlier itself. So there was some lethargy in, on part of some people somewhere. I, I, I cannot blame Dr. Kureshi for it. But look, since I have no evidence or I cannot say anything on this, but I, everyone thought it is getting too late. And one thing is there, when, when uh, Dr. Kureshi is, has claimed in a PTI interview that he had already submitted in February uh, 2020, which Leslie said at the start of our uh, conversation. And, and the Supreme Court has not taken note of it because they are at the moment busy with so many other things, more, more important things they have in line, which is also fine. Hmm. But at the same time, uh, when uh, so that means uh, the federation, uh, everybody knew that if the constitution doesn't come, the federation elections could be in jeopardy. Which everybody hmm. knew, and the federation hmm. elections is in December, December uh, 2020, which everybody knew from December 2016. Yes, because it had to be held yeah. in four, four years. Everybody knew yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. So. Why for this extension of man, mandate and for the for the for the uh, for the directives from the uh, from the uh, Supreme Court was sought in November 2020? This is I cannot understand. This could have been asked six months before. 
This could have been asked four months before. This could have been asked one year before. Just before one month before the before the before the uh, election is supposed to come. Why the timing? Well, that is that is that is what baffles everybody. The federation, if they were they were really willing to, uh, I dare to say, if they were really willing to hold the election, they could have gone there one one year before. See, one year from now is our elections. Please let us know what to be done on that. Mm. On 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 the, the December twenty one year uh, is your election, and you go to court on uh, court on uh, in November, and November twenty one you write, write a letter to the uh, state association saying we we have asked for the extension of mandate. Mm. So there is something uh, yeah. something very yeah. funny, uh, something very funny, and something uh, there is. To be uh, fair, some... to be fair to the federation, <laughs> last year they were busy demoting ID, right? So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What so, they always is that they think we are so stupid that we can't see what's going on. No, no, you know, they, they, they are not. They are not. They are not. See, they are not bothered. What ah, you and I think ahead. is not bothered. They are yeah. not bothered. Let it take it. Take it later. We yeah. are nobody. Correct. We are only wasting our time talking, talking to each other. Uh, talking to each <laughs> other. They must be laughing. If if anyone is yeah. watching, they must be laughing. Yeah. So the same thing. If 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 when we talk about all these federations and all the infighting that is happening there in June, July, I believe uh, the the body which is which is the umbrella over all these federations, the Indian Olympic Association, what mess played out in front oh of God. people? Uh, the internal fight between the president and the secretary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, they, my my experience, I'm telling talking. you, Sadant, you have since you have asked this question, Sadant. In uh, September, I think in September, I think I asked a senior AFF official that what is ha happening to your uh, to your elections. He started laughing. He said, "Why?" I said, "Why are you laughing?" He says, "Just wait and see. This committee will go forever." He, I said, "How can it that be possible? Your elections is in December 21, as per the sports code. How can it be?" Then he said, "Ah, the, don't show much interest. You will get to know about it. But they will continue continue after that also. No, I, so I, that I, means I, that means it was planned that this is going to happen like this. I probably I probably will be. I'm I'm inclined to believing that because I believe uh, Prafulla Patel has been president of Western India Football Association since 1993 or something. Like yes, that. yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 but uh, I was in school that time. And most important thing is that." As the president of the AFF, he 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 advised the advised all the state associations to to uh, accept the AFF constitution as the model constitution. The AFF constitution says nobody can stay in the office more than twelve years. So AFF president wrote it to Western India Football President for, for, for football well. association, and Western <laughs> India Football Association did not adhere to the AFF directives. <laughs> This is what happened when uh, N. Srinivasan was in the I. He was uh, in the he was an ISL franchise owner. He was in the IPL uh, IPL uh, franchise owner, IPL governing council, and president of the board. So he could sit in one room and have a conversation with three people. So yeah, he, but, he, at, but at the moment he is he is FIFA council member, which is which is I think for an Indian in any sporting body to it is one of the highest sports because FIFA, FIFA is. FIFA is one of the biggest uh, sports okay. federations in but the country. But what is the quality of person we are sending out as a sports administration in sports administration? I don't want to get the program into trouble and whatever. But please, <laughs> what's going to happen? Hey, but but, no, but you look at you look at people who are on top of all these bodies also. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you look at Seb Plata who is uh, now not in jail anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, exactly. But but yeah, you can understand the game that plays play yeah. on yeah. At, at that level. Yao have lunch. Huh. <laughs> oh, no, there, there's a whole, answer, there's a whole line of. Another thing I want to add, just as, as just you, what you since you asked, and I completely believe Mr. What Mr. Patel will, has said in the meeting, he has said he will not stay a moment after the election is announced, which he will adhere to. But the thing is that when the election will be announced, absolutely. Uh, yep. Till till the Supreme Court case is over, he said. But the question is, when the Supreme Court case will be over? Mm, mm. You have to have some. Somebody has to be in a hurry, but nobody is in a hurry. This no, it's a, it, it's an interesting mm. thing because also, of course, FIFA get involved in in these situations, and and our 
some of our sources has have also indicated that uh for example there was a suggestion that was mooted of a of a kind of collective decision or a call being taken between fifa the all india football federation as well as uh, uh, dr kureshi and bhaskar ganguly who who was supposed to set up the constitution to kind of figure out what are the roadblocks wh- why is it not going ahead etc uh, etc et but that to to the best of my knowledge that call has not taken place there is also the added uh, the the sort of sword that is dangled at least as far as the media is concerned now uh, this this happens very often in the media where a federation or or the ioa the indian olympic association says that if a third party interferes in the operation of a sports federation then that sports federation is likely to be derecognized by the international body which will have ramifications to which in the national sports code of 2011 and i'm sure in the uh, draft sports code of 2017 as well there is clear clarification and i'm not reading uh, out loud but i'm i'm sort of paraphrasing here so forgive me but uh, clear ca- clarification that according to uh, the laws of the land which is the union of india i uh, listed in uh, sort of uh, in uh, the union list uh, i think it's 10 and 13 uh, on that list um uh, that in fact the government is in a position to oversee uh, the operations of these national sports federations because they are because for one sports is a major part of international diplomacy it's how you know we send our ambassadors to the logic on which uh, the entire i think uh, structure of the indian olympic movement is based that we send our athletes as ambassadors of our country our culture etc etc to participate in and to promote the good things about what it is to be indian you know uh, from that on on to then of course various other aspects of of the scenario so clearly clearly the government believes that it is right and especially because it provides funding now the bcci may be an exception here but to all other sports federations it provides uh, a reasonable amount of their sustenance whether it's operation costs whether it's administrative costs whether it's the cost of sending their athletes on training programs all sorts of things so obviously money. the government it's the taxpayers yeah, money yeah taxpayers money. money absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so uh i will i we we should be bringing this to an end because we've been at it for a while and i th- i by the way i challenge everyone and maybe my job is not a job that uh, anyone really wants but if someone can explain this <laughs> entire scenario in you know aajkal wo explainer wala format kafi popular hai ki wo do ya teen minute mein sab sab kuch graphically chipka ke pura kahani samjha dete hain बट यहाँ पे तो मेरे ख्याल से दो ही ग्राफिक बनेंगे वो वो अभी इस प्रोग्राम पे तो नहीं बोलेंगे बट आई आई लाइक टू क्लोज दिस बाय आस्किंग ईच ऑफ यू फॉर योर लास्ट कमेंट्स ऑन व्हाट यू थिंक फर्स्टली व्हाई यू आर अपोज टू दिस अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बिहेवियर एंड एंड एज एज मे बी न्यूट्रल ऑब्जर्वर्स जर्नलिस्ट why do you think it's problematic beyond what we've already stated in terms of the negative impact on athletes and our performance at an international level uh start with you shaza uh this is uh, what is called uh, a sort of uh, a kitchen table governance that is on in indian sport and we are now in the 21st century and it's time to abandon it and to basically trash it and put it in the dustbin so we don't and you we've seen the uh, we've had a hundred more than 100 years to see not 100 chalo sorry 70 years to see the consequences of cricket in table governance on our sport when the uh, the global sport has professionalized uh, it's it's absolutely outdated and it's an absolutely disgusting way that everyone that these sports administrators from all sports are uh, acting and uh, just one one thing very very quickly that there's also a case cited in the new or the old uh, uh, sports code might be in the 2011 one which said that uh, there is a judgment which said that nothing is above the law of the land even if it's like an olympic charter or whatever it's not above the law of the land so that will be established in law and you'll find examples all over the world because sports governance all over the world there'll be a little shady people in it 
Okay, I'm stopping. <laughs> okay. Well, whichever one of you wants to go next. Nicholas Lee said whatever he has to say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Sidan mentioned about the sword dangling from the global body about uh, when when these things happen within the national national setup of of any sport for that matter. But the thing is that it's 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 again uh, earlier I went downwards saying that this thing gets affected right till the grassroots as far as the internal fights happen. The same thing applies up there also. If Raful Patel is a council member in FIFA. So obviously, action would be very reluctant. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying they might take action, but still, there would be some kind of reluctance because that's how the electoral politics up there happens. So there is connections over there. So there, if you have noticed all the history of uh, federations being debarred or recognition taken out from the global body, it has all happened when there is a faction, and that faction is favored by the global body. So it, it's as simple as that. And same thing applies here. When there is a faction within the federation, the uh, Indian Olympic Association favors one faction. That is when infighting happens, breakup happens, court cases happen, athletes get affected, blah, blah, blah. The, the main point, of course, we discussed all those implications here. But uh, the main point is the idea of how to uh, take Indian sport forward. So if you have... I mean, it's, it's a simple logic also. Why we have elections every five years, I mean, general elections, assembly elections, local body elections. It's, 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 too, it's, it's for people or for the, uh, I mean, in democracy, people are the stakeholders, right? It's for, it's for the people to decide whether this set of people were good enough to take, take, the, take the country forward, take the municipality forward, take the state government forward. The same thing applies to sport. The sport associations or the representatives of the state associations who come in to elect the national body, they should have a say every four years to decide whether this set of people ran the game properly or ran the show properly. And if it's not, then the set of people should, uh, should come in. And it's not about uh, that either. Sometimes even, even a great administrator or a great group of administrators having run 12 years or eight years or whatever the stipulated tenure is, you will need fresh approach, fresh, fresh set of ideas to take things because it's a, it's a constantly evolving ecosystem. You're talking about globally sport. Sport is not what it is today, two years from now. So it's as simple as that. So to catch up with the time, you will need new people to come in. You will need fresh ideas. So, so these elections, beyond all the political gaming and all that, it's about getting the right people in place to take things forward. And if that's not happening, then... We are actually, it's, we are not even stagnant. We are, we are bringing down things further. So, so it, it's a simple logic. Last word to you, Jerry, sir. See, I think this, uh, this uh, threat of FIFA might take, take action against India is an empty threat. Because as far yeah. as I know, FIFA has a lot of respect for the law of the land. They consider, don't consider it as a third party. If I and Hugh had gone to the court, if one of the members have gone to the court, one of the officials have gone to the court, they would have Im immediately taken action. But mm. since it is a Supreme Court decision, so they have a lot of respect for the law of the land of every country. Until unless something does happen so as it has been in Trinidad and Tobago, which was bizarre. So that is a different issue. But Indian situation is not bizarre. My only worry is that for the last 15, 20 years, 20 years, All India Football Federation was one of the better governed federations in the country. Hmm. But a group of people for their greed and to achieve their own gain and for their ambition, they have reduced, they, they might reduce to a, a, another federation where faction fight might start today or tomorrow or maybe sometime. That's what I feel. I am not sure about what the factional fight will be because as we all know, the Indian Super League is up and running and it's uh, in full flow. Um, I am not saying yes. there will be a factional fight, but it, can, it, might, it, might, it might ignite problems. That's what I say. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. Instead, yeah. instead of the so-called happy family, it mm -hmm. may not turn out to be a happy family. Because to ha make it a happy family, you have to keep everybody happy. Mm. Oh, one cannot think that only I will remain happy and it will still be a happy family. That's not mm. done. That's what oh, I that 
I mean, so this spreading happiness in many ways they try to do right. For instance, dispersing of funds, policies, stadiums, matches, cricket it happened. So <laughs> I don't cricket, know about cricket, that. Cricket, resources in cricket is too much, but it's not uh, in, in too much democracy. <laughs> democracy and foot, football you don't have so much of uh, uh, of fund also. Hmm. So yeah, no, you, several of these concerns. That's what. In fact, we were we were having a chat. Uh, we were doing a weekly roundup of the ISL in which we were just talking about some of these things, and it and it it, it did come up that there is no uh, opposition in principle to the ISL existing as a tournament or even as a private tournament or being governed the way it is governed. I mean, it should be for the clubs and the entities that are members of the ISL to uh, decide how it's governed or not. But when you have a constitutional body, a society that is supposed to administer, like like Shaza was mentioning earlier uh, very categorically about uh, making the distinction between management and governance, between policy and actual day-to-day -day administration of what happens, uh, that some of these issues come up because what we're saying now is that all of this is being like, um, like the slogan came from everyone, 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 <laughs> or uh, vikas ja raha hai, aur uska kya focus hai. you know things can be brushed aside we say we, we look at all all the and we're going to have a chat with uh, former India internationals Ishfaq Ahmed and Gurmangi Singh uh, in a little while from now where we'll be talking about some of the young players making a impact on the Indian Super League and of course they are those are the guys we're all sitting and watching every evening but just because young players are coming into the system and doing well is not does not e uh, sort of equate to a thumbs up for the way the system is being uh, sort of structured and will continue to operate because we will see in future that you will have a large number of these highly trained uh, sort of elite level athletes uh, who maybe spend some time on the bench, maybe get, get a contract for a year or two and then suddenly disappear. And meanwhile, where they are looking for, because for like like Jaydeep was mentioning just now, cricket may have a lot of resources and, and so on. But in other sports, people are looking, even in cricket, people are looking for gov government jobs. People are looking for sports quota admissions to, to university, to to all kinds of things, which help them actually survive and, and grow as human beings, not just uh, as athletes. And that suffers, particularly when the government uh, turns around and de-recognizes it. Which makes it absolutely, you're saying that it's not a bizarre situation, Jadeep sir, and you're not equating it with Trinidad and Tobago. But it, to me, it is bizarre that the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports on the one hand has de-recognized the All India Football Federation. And on the other hand, uh, you know, the president of the AIFF and the sports minister are standing on the same stage and making a joint bid for the AFC uh, 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 Asian uh, uh, Cup 2027. Uh, 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 one small thing, one small thing, Sudan. What is what? You know, AFF has been given the recognition back because the interim order came from Supreme Court. So yeah, many of the federations have gotten the recognition back. AFF is one of them. Till October 2021, I think they have got it. Till October, all right, fair enough. Thank you for that important clarification. So, so fair enough. I suppose that then that makes sense. Uh, we will, of course, follow this. Uh, the BCCI AGM is, is is a couple of days from now. I think uh, it'll be all over the press what happens there. How free the press is to report on what actually happens. Uh, how free, uh, you know, members of that uh, board are to speak about the goings on uh, and how much they want to or not is a different matter. But but thank you all for at least uh, doing your jobs as responsible journalists and media people and for sharing that all of this wealth of information with everyone watching uh, for for uh, th and thank you for everyone to everyone who's tuned in for this conversation i hope you stuck uh, stuck around for all of it there are please read shada's story on the uh, hindustan times website and jaydeep's story on newsclick and follow leslie for continuous updates on all of the stuff that newsclick is doing uh, we will have more for you, uh, not just uh, on the field, but but also what goes on around it. Uh, for now, that will be all. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good night.